unlike a lot of people, you are so versed in so many different areas. Your brain is incredible. You're like the the baby Cornell West. <laughs> the baby. You know what I'm saying? It's like is it the, no, I seriously is it the hair? I think no, about it's his that. Brain. Okay. I think about that. Like you're Thank like you. Cornell West. Like you got just so much stuff going on in your head. You you you've written some incredible pieces on the culture of hip hop. Thank you. You're like a historian in hip hop. For everybody that's listening, you actually taught a class in college. I did. On hip hop. At NYU, yeah. yeah. And which is crazy, which is incredible but then you're also very versed politically mm -hmm. you know um you've given some great opinions on a lot of things and you've written some incredible books especially books about african americans yeah and yeah. who we are and i also had an unforgettable moment at the white house correspondence dinner msnbc after party Dancing to the wobble with Angela Rye, and she's trying to show me how to do it. And I've never been a line dancing kind right. of person. There you go. Okay. But she was like, "Come on, man, Let, let's let's do this. Let me show you how to do this." And how she about was that? Trying to show me how to do it. I, I, that was Nina, one of the unforgettable moments. His incredible experience in the White House dancing to the wobble. Yeah, uh, not in the White House. <laughs> at the correspondence dinner. At the correspondence party dinner. after. At the party yeah. after. And but you know then. when they do that wobble, you got to move out the way. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of hips be moving. I don't got enough hips for no wobble, man. I'm out the way. But no, no, you, you legendary too, and I respect that, no doubt. Thank, Thank you, you very brother. much. Thank I you very much. I appreciate you. I actually, actually. I told Stretch Armstrong, yeah, oh, legendary DJ, that was gonna be on your show. He was like, "Ooh, Frank Ski, party rocker, yeah, he's been crushing it for decades." Yeah, we go back. Much respect. Thank you, brother. So, okay, so you're the first thing is the business is you're doing a podcast. Yeah, I got a podcast called Torre Show. Okay, where I interview. 99% of the time I interview black people. Sometimes we bring in some white people who are really interesting, but mostly it's black people really interesting, want to talk about success and how you attained it. Mm, yeah. Talk to Senator Booker, Ice Cube, Nia Long, Zadie Smith, Maxwell, Spike Lee, all kind of people, politics, entertainment, and we just dig into who you really are and how you made it. And uh, you know, I want I always want to figure out how did you make it to success? What are the attitudes that helped you succeed? What are the what are the mistakes that you made that you really learned from? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? How is it to what does it mean to be great at your profession? And so we just dig into all these kind of things with people and and uh, you know, we have a really good time. Wow. You talk about Senator Booker. You started talking about him. That's the first thing. What do you think about the field of everybody that's okay. trying to get past being a Democratic nominee? All right. Well, let me deal with that by first saying I'm also doing a podcast called Democracy-ish, where me and this brilliant sister, Danielle Moody Mills, talk about the election week by week, right, from a black and progressive perspective. And in the last uh, episode, we talked about Joe Biden. And now you know, right? Black people are lining up behind Joe Biden like crazy. He's got 47% of the black vote right now. Uh, Kamala Harris is at one. Senator uh, Sanders is at 16. Uh, Senator Warren is at eight, right? So we are lining, and I don't understand why are we behind Joe Biden? Oh, he's made some missteps, what said a he? few things. But, but I'm not even, I don't even want to deal with the gaffes, right? Because mm. We're being, behind him because of Obama. That's yeah. right, that's right. Why does he have a standing invite to the cookout? Because he stood behind, it wasn't no sacrifice for him to stand with Obama. That was a huge step up for him. It's not like he got behind him when he was trailing in the polls. He became his vice president when he was already the nominee. Yeah. What policy is Joe Biden talking about now that would make half of the black community say, that's our guy? I don't see it. I see much more from Kamala Harris, from Elizabeth Warren, even from Bernie Sanders, who rep giving us what we would want. Yeah, I, you know, and and a lot of people. But can anybody give us what we want? Obama. We thought Obama was going to give us what we want, and I debate people all the time. I loved President Obama. Right. But so many black progressives are like, he, he really didn't, didn't, do, didn't do nothing for us. Didn't do enough. I so think can Obama anybody come in and do for black people? You know, as I think Obama did as much as he possibly could have, given the political climate that he was in. Okay. When he was dealing with a group of Republicans who were saying, you aren't going to do anything. They weren't right? going to pass right? nothing. From, from, right. From the beginning, before he was inaugurated, Mitch McConnell said, we're going to make him a one-term president. 
by allowing him to accomplish nothing. Historic obstruction. Whatever you want to do, you want to pass a bill, you want to uh, you want to name a post office. Nothing. No is house happening, support. Yeah. Right? Gotcha. No support whatsoever. So what he accomplishes, he accomplishes through a slog of the mud, moving through like a slog of mud, unlike anybody ever. Now, what he accomplishes in passing the ACA is revolutionary for a lot of black people, right? Mm-hmm. Because suddenly we're able to access health care like we had never mm-hmm. before. That changes lives. But can, but in that vein, and I'm just picking your brain, um, can a Kamala Harris or Cory Booker get in there? And are they going to face the same thing Obama faced? They would face similar headwinds. Which is why people are going the, with Joe Biden. But the answer, the answer is no. Think, well, I think, well, I think yeah. the reason why people are talking about Joe Biden is some word called electability, yes. which means white people will vote for him. Right? We're afraid to put up a woman because a woman lost, which is insane because all the white men who lose, we never say, oh, no, don't put up another white man. Yeah. Right? We, yeah. Have, but Democrats, well, we know we ain't that progressive. Democrats haven't elected a white man since 1996. Right? No white man has won. White Democrat has won since 1996. Why are we not saying no more white men? They can't win as a, on a Democratic side. We need a woman. We need something different. Right? Yeah. I don't want us to nominate a person saying oh others will vote for him who do you want right we talk about the white gays why are you voting because you think white people will support this person what sense does that make None. and you don't even and and if you think we're going to win by thinking we're going to peel off some trump voters with joe biden you're crazy let they me give me let me, joe biden? let me jump the jump the train track real quick i i I would love to have you for five hours. I was going to say, that's a, that's a whole but, day conversation. But you are a hip-hop historian. Last week, there was a list that made the hip-hop world go upside down <laughs> oh, of the top list. 50 that, rappers list. of all time. From a guy who is on the nominating committee for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and has written... What was his name? You, Torre. Oh, no. Oh, my Oh my list didn't go out. I know, but I, I, want, said, oh, oh, I want I want you I, to I, know. I have been on that Rock and Roll Hall of Fame nominating committee. Yes, that is Yes, true. you are. So I want you to tell me... Oh, I see part of it. What, what do you think are the top rappers of all time? Look, look, Nina, watch how he goes from <laughs> politics to hip-hop. Lay yeah. it down, Torre. Well, to me, Jay-Z is number one all time. In terms of the complexity of the rhymes, the length of the career, the depth of what he's talking about. And you talk about a guy, first album, he's talking about shooting his brother, right? And talking very emotionally about that. Last album, talking about cheating on his wife Mm. and the pain around that. And basically saying, I'm really sorry for doing that, right? So, I mean, his career has been amazing. I put Nas number two. Because of the depth and complexity of his rhymes. And he is an amazing MC. Um, I put Biggie number three. Because, again, his storytelling, his voice, all this. I would put probably Cube number four. Ice Cube? Yes. Because of the force and the power of what he was talking about in his rhymes. My anti-authority? What? Talking about with Cube. Yeah just anti-authority is that why i mean i wouldn't have cube that high no i mean i think these he's definitely the most powerful mc to come out of the west and i love snoop to death um but cube man i mean from what he did with nwa from what he did as a solo artist some of the things he was talking about in terms of putting us up on Farrakhan in terms of to- putting us up on what's really going on in the gang world. Mm. And Cube was great at putting himself into the rhymes, right? Like this, like I did this, I did that. And he would, he was, he was wild at some of the stuff that he talked about. So what about some of the new people? <sighs> what about some of the new people? <laughs> oh, so Ray don't seem too high. I was going to ask him about the South. That West is pretty East Coast, and then you had Q. No doubt. I mean, I'm, I, you know, I grew up in Boston. I live, I've lived in New York a long, long time. Um, I went to Emory. So, you know, much, I, I know Atlanta. I love Atlanta. Um, Andre 3000 is definitely in my top 10, one of the most incredible MCs of all time. I've done a bunch of interviews with T.I. I've been to the house. He's an incredible MC. I love Ludacris. I love Lil Wayne. 
he has not been as incredible since he went to prison. And it was a brief stint, and I don't know what happened. Before he went to prison, oh, my God. It was like every time he was on the mic. It was like, right. You know right. what I'm talking well, about? He's, he's mixtape, mixtape, mixtape. Well, he's a little bit older. I mean, to Frank's point, we got a lot of younger folks. Young Thug just put an album out today. I mean, it, okay. his birthday's today as that, well. That sounds nice. Oh. <laughs> Oh, so, oh, thank All right, you, so last right. thing, real quick. I was listening to, I just started listening to Rick Ross's new, I don't know if it's Porter, a mixtape or Porter, No, the album, Port of Miami yeah. too. There's some heat on there. Oh, yeah. yeah. You got I'm one, with, you got one with Summer Ross. Walker. Yeah. And you know what I'm not mad at? Rick Ross is the best beat picker yes. in the game. Smooth. So when he gets a little older and he's like, I don't want to MC anymore. I'm going to maybe like A&R or executive produce and I'm going to pick beats for you, Young Buck. Mm. Woo! That could be incredible. I'm not mad so at Rick, right. Rick I got, Ross. I got like 30 seconds. Before we went to the break, I told you I wanted to ask you your opinion. Mm. Of the Jay Z NFL deal, I think this might be Jay Z's biggest public mistake. Yep, I think that he has been used as a pawn by the NFL to allow them to move on from the Colin Kaepernick situation. To be able to say, "Look, we're not racist. Jay Z is down with us. What's the problem?" The same way that. Kanye standing next to Trump allows him to say, how can I be racist when this brother you love is standing with me? Now, Jay-Z has given that to the NFL. And I don't know for what. And I don't know how this and him saying, we've moved on from kneeling. We need to do the next. How does this square with the guy who's out here talking about Khalif Browder, Trayvon Martin, Meek Mill, criminal justice reform? I don't see it. I see a guy who's standing with the NFL now saying, they're okay. I can rock with them. It doesn't make sense to me. And I don't and I don't really appreciate it. And Jay-Z has made little mistakes before, but this one is a little bigger. And I think he's starting to feel the heat coming back at him. And for the NFL to say, we're, we've moved on. We're addressing this. We're giving money to this one and that one. When Colin still can't get a job, that matters. That yeah. matters. And he's showing us, look, I'm still ready. I'm still out here. He's better than a lot of the quarter. Is he not better? Uh, I'd the- say uh, 75%, 80% of the, all the quarterbacks in the league. I mean, at least at least 10 teams would benefit from having oh, him. Absolutely. And he, and he's definitely better than 100% as a, of the backups. As a, as a starter, and yeah, and a lot of the backups. There's no doubt about that. There's tons of teams. The Carolina Panthers would be a great team. For Colin to be on backing up somebody like Cam Newton, who unfortunately has been a little bit injury prone here. Look, I'm not saying that the NFL as an institution is racist. I think a lot of the owners are racist, but I'm not saying the institution is racist. I'm saying they want to move on. They want to get back to entertainment, right? That's what they're selling is entertainment. And this was a distraction from that. So they're like, how can we get rid of this distraction? And Jay-Z is helping them get rid of what they consider a distraction. And let's get back to the game, y'all. I mean, like, is there anyone else who could have helped absolve them in this way? Kanye couldn't do it. I can't think of anybody else who could come in and the players respect him. All the black people who were, I mean, like, I, I never stopped watching the NFL. I was mad at them. But, I mean, like, I grew up watching the NFL with my dad. He was a Patriots fan when they sucked. Oh, yeah. When it was Steve Grogan before you were born, they were terrible, right? And he was a hardcore. So when they, toward the end of his life, when they started to be a dynasty, he was so happy. So, you know, it's wrapped up in me and my dad growing up. And my my dad was great, too. He would be like, look how they don't have black quarterbacks. He was talking that in the 70s. How come they, how come we can't be black? And when we started to be black quarterbacks, he was like, how come we can't be coaches, right? So my dad was, put me up on game. We weren't just watching football. We were watching through a political lens. That's why Bill Russell had such a big impact on just all sports. Because he was one of the first folks to do that. My dad... Came up in Harlem, right, but moved to Boston, was friends with those guys, Tom Sanders, Bill Russell, he played poker with them. He was rooting for the Celtics when everybody else, although other black people were like, no, we don't mess with the Celtics. He was like, yo, the Celtics had the first all-black five. They had the first black player. They had the first black coach, right? Who are you rooting for? And people be like, what? I, I, their minds would be blown. I see where you get it from. Everybody, oh, no. Torre has been our special guest. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Frank. We got to sit down again sometime. Let's do it. I appreciate it.